So I was sent a, a little video a couple of months ago now uh, of a young person, uh, uh, I suppose they're in their maybe 20s, and they're having a conversation with their mom in the kitchen. And this uh, young lady asks her mom, well, did you enjoy the, the new iPad I got you? And she said, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Maybe a bit, a bit uh, unnecessary in, 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 in certain ways, but I find it very, very useful. She said, I use it a lot in the kitchen. She said, oh, fantastic. All right, so there they are. And she just puts an onion on top of the, the iPad and just starts chopping it, thinking that it's a chopping board. Right, you know, it's got an indestructible screen and so on. So just chop the onion, and then she pops it into the, into the, into the dishwasher. Do you know, and then the daughters are there horrified. Like, it's an iPad. I know it's an iPad. It's very good at cutting things. No, 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 it's a screen. You're supposed to watch things on it, you know? So I find so often when it comes to our sacraments, particularly the Eucharist, we have this incredible treasure that we don't understand. We have this incredible source of grace that, as such, we don't really know how to tap into. Maybe we don't even know we're supposed to tap into it. I remember, like, uh, very often, unfortunately, when you do school masses and things like that, and it's, it's no, it's not their fault, but, like, often kids don't know what they're supposed to be doing at mass. They don't know what it is. They don't know what the Eucharist is. They don't know how to receive. Um, even a friend of mine was in, in Lourdes recently, and they went down to the grotto to pray the rosary. And then the kids, and the lads on the way back from the rosary, and, that, was, that was a good mass now, miss. That was a good mass. It wasn't mass. It was a rosary. Like, there was a rosary, but they don't know the difference. I think that's prayer is mass. You know what I mean? There's a rosary procession. Oh, it was a good mass. <laughs> there was no mass at all. Like. So our understanding of the, of the basics of the faith can be very, very lacking. So we have this incredible, like this is, this is absolutely beyond words. When we get to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, the creator of the universe, the person that all of the Old Testament was preparing for, Jesus who becomes incarnate, Jesus then who preaches and teaches and lives, knowing that he will die on a cross, empties himself out for us, to absolve us from our sins, to wash us clean of our sins, and then becomes food for us to eat so he can remain with us and live with us from within. This is what we are privileged, honoured to receive in Holy Communion every day if we wish. There is nothing normal or ordinary about this. Like the, this is, it's, like, it's like the culmination of, of so much divine wisdom and divine preparation and providence and prophets and, and patriarchs and authors of scripture and Jesus' life itself. Like all of this prepares what we do today. Like this is, it's, it, this is mind-blowing. This isn't ordinary, you know. I mean, I've even at, at certain school masses, I mean, for, from a priest's perspective, certain liturgical occasions can be kind of difficult. Uh, again, it's no one's fault. Well, I won't go into that. But uh, uh, the fact that they don't know, if they're not practicing, but there's the, the tradition of having a school mass or whatever, they come along because it's part of the, it's part of the, the, the yearly program. They're not necessarily coming along because of faith. They're coming along because it's the done thing. And then you can see, you can see who receives with faith and who doesn't. And again, it's nothing that in a judgmental way, it's just if, if we know what we're, if we knew what we were doing, if we knew what, who we were receiving, there's no way you'd kind of come up with this kind of swagger and the hands down here with chewing gum in your mouth. You just wouldn't. You know, if we knew what we were doing. I think it was actually uh, Ian Paisley who said, if I believed what the Catholics believe about the Eucharist, I would go the whole way to the nearest church on my knees. You know, if that was really God, if that's really Jesus in the Eucharist, sure, I'd crawl to the nearest church. You know, so if, if and that's from a man who didn't believe in the Eucharist, in the true persons of Jesus in the Eucharist. So, 
we get to do this, and it's 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 an incredible it's an incredible honor. It's an incredible honor as a priest to to be able to celebrate mass. So, what's the Eucharist then? What's it for? You know, I think it's it's, it's like anything when 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 kids or children are studying at school, they want to know what it's for. If it's not for anything useful, then they're not interested in it. You know, I mean, if, if they're studying a subject that they know they'll never use, oh, they put no effort into it. Whereas if it's something they like, something that they want to use afterwards, they put time and effort into it. So even voluntary things like uh, sport, like, you know, GAA, what's it for? It's not just for fitness, because you can run on your own without having to be part of a team and getting shouldered in the face by a lad who's six foot two and built like a fridge, you know. I mean, no, you, you don't, if you want to get fit, just run. Why do lads play GAA? Why do they play sports like that? I mean, they might not ask themselves. They don't sit down and contemplate life. But why do they do this? Why do they play that sport? Why do they go turn up for training? Hail, rain, or snow. All of which could happen in one hour in Ireland. Why do they turn up? For the glory. Do you know that, that feeling of scoring a point or a goal and have the, your whole side go, you absolute legend. Do you know, and all the lads on the, on, on the sideline roaring out, or maybe getting a, a, a club medal or a county medal, maybe in All-Ireland, but just even any local victories, anything at all, just when people affirm you, you've done well, you're a good hurler, you're a good back, you're a good forward, you're a great keeper, whatever it is, just that people affirm you, it's for affirmation, it's for glory. It's not necessarily, it's not, I'm not saying that, that it's all vanity. All of us want to be loved and affirmed in our own way. But they know what it's for. They, they do this because it, it feels good. So when they receive Holy Communion, do they know what they're supposed to do? Do, do they know what the, how they're supposed to react? They have no idea. And maybe we don't either. When I receive Holy Communion, I mean, remember, as, as a, I can only imagine what it's like for a young family with three or four kids. After you receive Holy Communion, now the kids are getting a bit angsty, right? Because everyone has moved. So when it's moving time, it's moving time. I want to move, you know? And then maybe the, the, the mom and the dad have kind of the eye on the car park and you're first finding the keys. So as soon as the final blessing comes, out the gap, into the shop on the way home for ice cream, if the kids were well behaved. Or at least that's how it used to work for us. Uh, so we receive Holy Communion and rather than being immersed in this profound moment of union with God, we're just focusing on the next thing already. And so that, that holy communion doesn't take place. I receive the thing, the holy bread, or whatever terrible terms are used, but no holy communion takes place. I don't actually unite my heart to God. I don't receive, I mean, I receive, it's like I receive all this, 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 this grace that I don't use. And so it's just lost, just not used, just wasted. <clears throat> In his book, uh, Dr. Bob Schutz writes um, in the book Be Transformed about the, the healing power of the sacraments. And he says the Eucharist, Holy Communion, is given to us by the Lord for many things, but one of them is for the healing of abandonment. The healing of abandonment. Why that? Because when we receive the Lord, now we, we have the opportunity to enter into a Holy Communion with him, which means what? I'm never... <clears throat> means I'm never alone. I'm never alone. And that Holy Communion is the same Holy Communion that you're part of and you're part of and you're part of. And the people in Botswana and Lithuania and Australia are part of. So we enter into this Holy Communion with the Church throughout the world. We become part of this mystical body with Jesus as the head. So we're never alone. And you see that where, where Catholicism has lived well at the time of a, a baptism or a confirmation, but especially maybe weddings and funerals, where the community comes together and celebrates in faith this sacrament. Where the community comes together to support in, the, 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 those who are grieving. The community comes together. Why? Because we're in this together. We're a family. We're, we're in this holy communion. We've been bound together by Christ. So Holy Communion is, is given to us, as I say, amongst many other things, to heal 
that wound of abandonment. Now you think of back now to our, our students in, in secondary schools, so many of them whose lives are, are, are sad, are lonely, are just very, very superficial, their lives, not, not, not them as people, but their lives can be so superficial. It's all about, you know, quick posts and quick distractions and quick entertainment. Everything is, is quick and superficial. And then last thing at night, when you're on your own in your bed, is there anything of substance in your life? Anything with meaning? Do you make a difference? Or is your life just what you've posted online, this, this, this facade of perfection and beauty and success, but inside that is not what you feel? So you can see how then they just do the same thing the following day because it's all they know. And maybe we as adults do the same thing. Just do the next thing, it's just, 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 just the next thing that needs to be done. And there isn't time for a reflection. Or... So what do we end up with? We end up with very, very sad people whose lives feel quite empty. On the other side, we have the Holy Communion, Christ himself, who wants us to enter into this life and life to the full with him. And why is that important? Because what do we aim to do in heaven? In heaven, Jesus is our everything. Jesus is, uh, heaven is not just a better version of earth or kind of a reward for those who, who are on good behavior while down here. Heaven is for those who want to be united with God for all eternity. And if you don't want that, you don't have to have it. That's the scary truth. If we don't want communion with God for all eternity, we don't have to have it. It's on offer to us, but we don't have to have it. So we start that now. We start living that and practicing that now. So when the time comes that I get to, again, this sounds horrendous to say, I get to choose whether I want God for all eternity or not by my life. I get that opportunity here, today, to enter into that holy communion with the Lord. Where in my heart of hearts, I get to meet him who created me and the world I stand on and the universe I live in. I get to meet him who died on the cross for me. I get to meet him who knows me better than I know myself. So we ask the Lord today. In his goodness and generosity, in his simplicity and humility, to help us to rediscover a Eucharistic love, a love for him in the Eucharist, a love for him in Holy Communion, which heals so many of our wounds, but especially the wound of abandonment and loneliness. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Amen. <clears throat>